You to God be the glory in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. I just wanted to just bring this word today because you know a lot of us we have been feeling so much attacks you know on the body uh in the body and at the same time you know a lot of people are dealing with sicknesses that are kind of unexplained and you have to understand that you know every single time we come into a certain timing of the season uh depending on what time of the year it truly is you know there's so much witchcraft activity that is happening and majority of us is like they're either being done to you consistently yeah you know people just projecting all manner of things against you and it seems like it's unending as you get out of one another one seems to be manifesting it's like you've gotten victory and again it's like a recycled attack but we thank god because of the finished work of christ jesus that is why the bible declares that if the sun sets you free you are free indeed and also understanding that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free because we've looked on this channel many a time according to the book of Jude chapter 1 and verse 8 to 9 and we've consistently seen you know in looking at the dimension of the body and how the Lord is reconciling the body back to himself that means there are some things that the people are calling what is in the body but the Lord did not call it so and for that reason destruction came against it can we read that scripture together in the very same way, the Bible declares, Jude chapter 1, verses 8, it says, On the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. So we can see that in this dimension, every time there is an attack on the body, there are some times that the angel of the Lord will be the one to fight for it. And I will tell you the reason why. The Bible says in verse 10 of Jude chapter 1, it says, Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand. And the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Can I read that again? It says, Yet these people slander what they do not understand. And the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. So it helps to understand that every time either somebody comes against your body or attacks your body there is destruction that follows the person who does that in itself so that is the reason why i keep on helping us to understand that we have to be in a place where we are not defiling the body yes no yeah we're not defiling it in any way and that in itself it helps to understand that those who do not understand the things of the body you know they come under destruction so you can see in verse 9, where the angel of the Lord was the one who was disputing, yes, with Satan, concerning the body of Moses, because Satan wanted that body. And angel Michael said, nah, nah, -uh, you ain't having it. Can you see that in itself? This goes in accordance with when Jesus Christ also, when he was crucified on the cross. And we can see that upon his resurrection, they try to make sure that he doesn't come out at all. But the Bible tells us that after three days and three nights, the quickening spirit of the Father, Romans 18 and 11, quickened him back. So every time it comes to the dimension of the body, can you see? The angels, they are basically watching over that. The spirit of the Lord, Holy Ghost, is watching over that in itself. And the reason why this consistently happens is because of what Jesus himself said in the book of what? John and chapter 2. So we can see in John chapter 2, when Jesus was basically speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, this was after he went into the temple. And what did he do? There were money changers in the temple. And he drove them all out. And upon driving them out, you can see he began to heal the people. That is what some part of the scripture says. Then the Bible says in verse 18, in John chapter 2, it says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up so jesus was helping them to understand you are going to destroy this temple but in three days i am going to raise it up again and we can consistently see that it is very dangerous to destroy the temple of god can you see that in itself so then the jews yeah 40 and 6 years was this temple in building and with us 
rare it up in three days? Can I read that again? Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou rare it up in three days? That means, you know, this temple was built for 46 years, and you're telling me, you're telling us that you're going to basically pull it down and raise it up in three days? But they didn't realize that when Jesus was speaking, he was speaking about his body. Yes, because his body is the temple. Then he went on to say, When therefore he has risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them, and they believed the scripture that the word which Jesus had said. So you can see the emphasis of the very body of Jesus when he spoke this in itself, helping us to understand, yes, that your body is his temple. Do you see that in itself? Your body is his temple. You know, we've looked on this channel many times, you know, when we talked about altars and temples, that under the old covenant, there were altars, but under the new covenant, there are no more altars. So you have to understand, it's called a sanctuary now. Can you see that? So that building you go to is actually a sanctuary. Your body is the temple of the Lord. Can you see how Jesus reconciled that to the Father, that your body is his temple? Let's read it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. It says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Do you see why it says honor God? Because your body is not your own. That is why I, you know, when I speak to a lot of people, I help them to understand. You basically can say, oh, I don't want to put, God can say, hey, I need you to put something. I need you to do something with this body. No, it is my body. It is my body. It is my, the body belongs to me. The body belongs to me. It is my body. If you look at it from the realm of the flesh, it could be yours. But in the realm of the spirit, it is for God. Because you know why? Holy Ghost is the one who basically dwells in there. This is why God was asking consistently, if you read in the book of Isaiah, it says, what temple are you going to build for me? What temple? What, what temple? Because I do not reside in temples made by the hands of people. So that sanctuary that you're going to, calling it the temple of God, I don't reside there. His name is on it, but he doesn't reside there because his word says, I do not reside in temples built by man. So you can see why Jesus affirmed and says, your body is my temple. So you can go on to see in 1 Corinthians and chapter what? And chapter 6, they're about. And it says again, which Apostle Paul brought about the revelation. It says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own because you know why? God now dwells in you. So this is the prayer that Jesus prayed right from the very beginning, that you and I, Father, make us one as you and I are one. Because the Father doesn't dwell in temples made by hands. He dwells in you. So you are his temple, hence the reason why he dwells. That is why the Bible says, in you I live, in you I move, in you I have my being. Because you are the spirit of the living God. So you can begin to understand that you were bought at a price and the price was the blood of the, of the Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross in itself because of the sacrifice that he paid for you. So for that reason, you can see why the Father is always in system. Present your bodies to me as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. So do you see why he talks about presenting the body to him because it belongs to him? So for those who still think that your body is yours, then you have not presented it to him yet. The more you continue to think that body is yours, you have not presented it to him yet. I, I, I just want to break that to you. Yeah, this is my body. This is my body. This is my... No. It says you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. You are the body. Can we basically... Uh, can we basically read that in itself? Uh, you are the body where it says that. Do you see the beauty of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in itself? When Jesus was talking about, when Apostle Paul, he says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Can you see all of that in itself? Then he goes into verse 26. He says, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Then he goes into verse 27. Now you 
are the body of Christ and each one of you. So every time people basically read this scripture that you are the body of Christ, they basically put it as a collective word that you and I, you know, the whole church, they are the body. No, that is not what he's saying. He says you are the body. You see that body? Yes, that body of yours. That body where we read in John chapter 2. It says, destroy this temple and I will raise it in three days. That body, yes, it says that body is the body of Christ. Hence why I said in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that when you have not yet presented that body unto the Lord, that is why you still continue to look at it as your own. And the more you look at it as your own, then it is not for Christ. Because why? That is duality. So it's either it's your body or it's the body of Christ. You cannot have both at the same time because who you are is the spirit. That body is the body of Christ and he dwells in you. That is why you are his spirit. Amen. So you can continue to understand. It says that what? You are the body of Christ and each one of you. So he talks about you first. Then now he talks to the church. Each one of you is a part of it. So a lot of people put the emphasis of body as the church. No, the body is you. Then each one, every member, yeah, the church now is a member of it. So this is why you continue to see, yes, when basically the father can say, hey, uh, you know, you might be sensing something in your body and you're wondering, what is this happening in my body? I'm trying to sense this. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing this. And the father is saying, it's not in you. It is somebody around you who is going through the same thing. So I need you to pray for them. When you pray for them, that thing lives because now, because you are the body of Christ, you're feeling the infirmities of others. Do you see that? I believe I've taught that as well, feeling the infirmities of those around you. Because what is happening to you is not of you. Sometimes it is those around you. And when the things is happening to those around you, the moment you begin to pray for them, eventually that which is happening will eventually cease from you. Because you're his body. So now you're feeling what Christ himself is feeling. Because the Bible says your body is the body of Christ. So you can begin to understand, and in verse 28, it says, And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophet, third teachers, then miracles, gifts of healing, and of helping, guidance, and different kind of tongues. So you can continue to see the consistency of the word of God, which began in John chapter 2, reconciling your body as the temple of the living God. So consistently, Jesus and Apostle Paul continue to help us to understand the fruitfulness of what the body truly is. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? So now look at it. It refers to that again, helping you to understand that your body is his temple. Your body is his temple. Your body is his temple because God himself dwells inside of that body. Then this is where we come into the dimension of the scripture, where it says, if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. So you can see why the Israelites, you know, in the time, the Jews, in the time when they basically, you see what happened to John the Baptist. He basically sold that body for destruction. What happened? He died. Do you see that? Because it was already testified about him that this is what is going to happen. So you can see now the father reconciling that body in Christ Jesus on the cross, helping you to understand that this body, yes, now belongs to God. And for that reason, you can see why we read in the book of Jude, the angel of the Lord. Yes, Satan was disputing over the body. The angel of the Lord was defending it. So every time we're speaking about the body here and the book of Jude, help you to understand that the Lord himself is the one fighting, yes, over that body to make sure that Satan does not have advantage over that body. Why? Because in the book of 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, it says, if anyone destroys God's temple, so you can see why the scripture goes back, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. This is why, you know, I just, I always release the mercy of God unto each and every one of us. Understanding if, you know, people who continue to project witchcraft, continue to project all manner of diseases, praying sicknesses over your body, releasing warfare against your body. Do you know what they're doing? They are bringing themselves under the destruction of God. Because you know why? It says God will destroy anyone who destroys God's temple. 
Do you see that? So if that sorcerer goes to a, a, a witch doctor and begins to basically, ah, this is the person's picture, this is the person's clothing, this is the person's hair, I'm paying money for this. Let me give you an example, right? Because look at what happened with name Haman and the Israelites when he wanted to destroy the temple of God. Yes, he wanted to destroy the Lord's people. What happened? He eventually died. And not just him, he paid for it with his whole family. So you can begin to understand the very principle of the word in 1 Corinthians 3.17. It says, if anyone destroys, so if anybody is trying to launch witchcraft against your body, if anybody is basically releasing sickness over your body, if anybody is going into witchcraft covens and all of these things, sorcerers, casting spells over your body, they are bringing destruction over themselves. Why? Because he says, if anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy that person. So you can see why the scripture, because sometimes when you release this kind of word, people will be like, hey, ah, you are releasing witchcraft. You are releasing this. No, because they've been judged by the word. The moment they decided to do that, to release infirmities over your body, you went to bed, you were okay. All of a sudden you woke up and you're feeling all manner of pain. So you're like, what is happening here? You know, how did it get here? Not realizing. Maybe somebody decided to go and cast spells somewhere. Somebody decided to give you food so that you can be sick. Somebody decided to to give you drink so that you can be sick, you know, because the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, you will drink poison, but you will not die. Do you see that? Because somebody gave you poison. Do you know what they're doing? They are trying to destroy the temple of the Lord. And for that reason, they brought destruction upon themselves. Do you see the beauty of the word of God? If anyone destroys it, Yes, God will destroy that person for God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. The same word goes, anyone who defiles the temple, anyone who tries to defile you. So this is why I feel, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm just encouraged to, to pray for people who are basically going through all that, you know, somebody coming to sleep with you in dreams, somebody coming to have sex with you in dreams, somebody trying to choke you in dreams, trying to lie to you in dreams and do all of that thing, trying to release defilement through dreams. Can you see that? The author of this confusion in itself, they are bringing themselves under that this God's destruction without them knowing it. So they might be doing it masquerading. They might be doing it hiding in darkness, but they are actually bringing destruction upon themselves. Do you see the beauty of the word of God? This is why the father, the majority of you tells you, don't be anxious for anything. They are doing that to you. Don't worry, just persevere through it. Why? Because the father in his infinite mercy was trying to show the person who keeps doing these things mercy in itself. And try to help them to understand. Touch not. Don't do it. You're releasing sickness over that person. You are only destroying yourself because you know why? Your body is his temple because you've presented it to him holy and blameless. That's what the Bible declares in Romans chapter 12. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and Proper worship. A majority of you have done that. But yet, they keep releasing all of these infirmities. They keep releasing all of these things that God did not ordain. They keep releasing it onto you for you to fall sick. Yes, out of their own selfish ambition or whatever it is. But they didn't realize that while they were doing this, they were bringing destruction onto their own selves. It is not God. So for some of them, it is not God destroying them. It is them. They have come under the judgment of the word. They are bringing destruction upon themselves. The moment they rose up and decided to attack your body, they basically brought judgment upon themselves. That is why you can see, we talked about that, yeah, it's not communion that is going to heal your body. It's the God in you. That's why the Bible says, and the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Do you see that? Because they killed, they basically put Jesus on the cross. On the third day, it was the spirit that basically raised him up yet again. That is how beautiful. That is how amazing. That is how glorious your body truly is. So to that person, a witch, a witch doctor, a sorcerer that decided and plotted this thing, they brought judgment against themselves because Holy Ghost resides in you. Your body is his temple. Can you see that? And the moment they decided to do it, they brought destruction upon themselves. The first dimension. 
So the second dimension is for people. This is why we've been encouraging a lot of people. Flee from adultery. Flee from sexual immorality. Flee from fornication. Flee from all of these things. Because the more you continue to defile the body, yes, flee from all of it. Because as you continue to defile that body, you are bringing destruction upon yourself too. Do you see that? So the more you continue to defile the body, the more you continue to destroy. So you're destroying it. How are you destroying it? You're putting things, you know, that the Father is saying, don't put that in you anymore. Don't put that in you anymore. I don't want you to do that anymore. I don't want you to, I don't want that in my temple anymore. Because the more you continue to do it, you're bringing destruction upon yourself. This is why the Father, majority of the time, is calling people, stop that habit. Stop doing that. I don't want you to do that because you have to understand understand the body. The body is sacred because it is the temple of the Lord. Because the moment you continue to do these things, do you see the destruction that you're bringing upon yourself? So sometimes it's not the witch. Sometimes it's not the sorcerer. Sometimes it's not any of those. It is you. You brought it on yourself. Do you see that in itself? To God be the glory. So this is why the Father is wanting majority of us to come away from all of those things, to be reconciled back to him in order to walk in purity and in blamelessness. Yes, because this is his will for your life. He doesn't want you to perish. Do you see that? He doesn't want you to perish, but he wants you to come into the fulfillment of the everlasting, everlasting what? Everlasting life. He says, the thief, what does he come to do? He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give life and give it abundantly. So you can see the abundance of life he's trying to give you. Hence the reason why he tells you to stay away from some things. Stay away from that makeup. Stay away from that perfume. Stay away from all of those things. Why? Because it has already been judged in the Bible. Stay away from nose rings. Stay away from wedding rings. Stay away from all of these things. Because the more you continue to engage in them, you are only bringing destruction to that temple. Because all of these things has been judged in the Bible. So the more you continue to put these things on yourself, you are defiling the temple of God. Why? Because those things have already been judged in the Bible. So that's why I said to each and every one of us, it is not God who is bringing all of those things. So majority of the time, when the judgment of the word is happening to our body, we head over to the doctor and then we come under their drugs. Whereas it was not a drug issue, it was not a doctor issue, it was the word issue because you place yourself in that word. Can you see that? So the more you have known the truth, but you continue in that activity, can you see that dimension of what happens to you? Stay away from immorality. Stay away from sexual immorality. But yet, we continue to do it time after time, time after time. And then what happens? You're releasing all manner of things against the body because you are defiling his temple. So a lot of people, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, are sick in the body and are listless, not because it was the enemy that is doing it to them, but they brought it on themselves because of the activities in which they are manifesting. So you can see where the mercy of God comes in. Because who knows that body better than God? That is why he said in Jeremiah chapter 1, I knew thee before I formed thee. So God knows you better than the doctor. God knows about your body better than the doctor. This is why he tries to liberate you from all of these activities. Because when you do it, you give the enemy advantage. Yes, because he's doing it anyway, or she's doing it anyway. That's what the enemy does. So I found an open door, so I'm just going to go right in. Can you see that in itself? But the glory of God comes into manifestation now as you begin to close these doors gradually and gradually you can see now you're getting much better according to third john and two that you prosper in health as your soul is prospering now your your soul is prospering you're prospering in health your soul is prospering do you see the beauty of the word of the father so like i said there are two dimensions of this Either somebody is releasing all those things to you, whereas, yes, because like I said to each and every one of us, those who, you know, if you basically made the mistake, you repented of it, the person who basically took advantage of your mistake and tried to release all manner of things against, they brought destruction upon themselves too. 
So rather than pray for you and help you, they decided to use that for their own advantage, to bring all manner of wickedness against you. So this is why I very much, you know, I, I, I just basically encourage a lot of us in this hour because you are the what? You are the temple of the Lord. You are the temple of the living God. The Bible says it very clearly. It says that what? In 1 Corinthians it says, and, chapter, and chapter 6, I believe they're about, uh, chapter 3, it says that what? If anyone destroys, so if anyone releases destruction against your body, releasing sickness, releasing all of these things, if you did it to yourself, the Bible is saying to you that what? Don't you know if anyone destroyed God's temple, God will destroy that person? So for that person attacking you, for you basically being, manifesting all of those things against yourself, it is you've come under the very destruction of the Lord. And that is why he's calling you away from those things, calling you away from immorality, calling you from away from all of these things that basically defiles the temple. He doesn't want you to be defiled. Not at all. Do you see that? He doesn't want you to be defiled. No, it is not his will for you to be defiled. Because immediately that happens, hey, <laughs> the judgment of the Lord is always trying to save. Can you see how the Father is always trying to save us from his judgment? But then, because we don't, you know, we don't take God very seriously. We mock him, we do whatever it is. We go and keep doing the same thing, you know, and the Father is like, hey, you know, if it happens to you, the consequences of it. That is why the Father allows some people to go through the consequences of their actions so that they can learn a lesson that next time they don't do that again. Do you see the beauty of the word of the Father? And this is what is encouraging majority of each and every one of us in this hour to understand that your body is his temple, that your body is his temple, that body that you're looking at, it is his temple. You are not of your own because you are him. You belong to him. Your body belongs to him. Every part of you belongs to him. Can you see you are the body of Christ? So I want to help you to understand that today because this is what the Father is bringing in this hour. Because a lot of you, you've gone through situations and circumstances in the first dimension. Yes, that is not of your own accord. Some of you, you know, you are wondering, why am I so sick? Why am I sick? Why am I, you know, who is launching all of these things against me? You've gone to the doctor, they can't find anything. You've gone to the hospital, there is no report concerning it. They said, you, you look well, everything about this report, you sound okay. But you didn't realize that it was perhaps somebody trying to afflict you, just like they did with Job. He was afflicted. Satan began to afflict him in every manner. Do you see that in itself? God allowed that affliction and then eventually rescued him from it because he used it for his glory. So there are some times that the Lord can allow something, but then he deals with the situation that basically transpired and allowed that to happen in the first place. So hence the reason, the beauty of the holiness of the Father to reconcile that back to you. So if it was a mistake that brought destruction to the body, he will recon He wants to reconcile you. If it was somebody who did that to you, the Bible says, vengeance is mine and I will repay. So for the person who decided and got up and said, well, I'm going to destroy this person. I'm going to, they brought themselves on the judgment. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. They sowed that affliction over your body, they reap destruction. Can you see that in itself? They reap destruction. You sowed immorality over your body, you reap destruction. So you can see why a lot of you, it's either somebody did this to you or you did it yourself can you see that or perhaps god allowed it in itself so whatever the three dimension is you have to inquire of the lord father help me to understand why this is happening why it happened help me to understand it so if you fall into any of if you are in between any of those three categories if you if god allowed it be sure that he will get you out of it if you got into it you need the mercy of god if it's the enemy who brought this upon you in the two dimensions the, the, it was destruction all the way but the father in his mer infinite mercy he says that what he whom the son sets free is free indeed he loves you so very much do you see the beauty of it? He loves you so very much. And he doesn't want you, yes, to come into alignment with this destruction. Yes, concerning defiling your own temple. Is anybody trying to have sexual relations with you? 
Run from it. Is anybody trying to offer you things that you know will grieve the spirit concerning your body? Flee from it completely. No, no, thank you. God bless you. Yes, because your body is his temple. Your body is his temple. Your body is his temple. Whatever he wants in it, he has. Whatever he doesn't want in it, that is where self-control comes in. I'm not going to allow that in the temple of the living God. Do you see the beauty of that in itself? In Jesus' mighty name. So this is just a, a word unto each and every one of us because I believe in this season, a lot of people that witchcraft has been launched against, yes, concerning your body, the Father is about to reconcile that and bring it into fulfillment in your life. Yes, he's about to cancel the assignment of the enemy concerning your health, concerning all that came against your body. Yes, because it was not your fault. You are not guilty and he's releasing you from that to come into the wholeness that he has ordained for you. And for majority of you that brought this upon yourself this is where the quickening spirit the bible says in the book of malachi 3 of 1 it says the refiner's fire there's a refining fire that would come and begin to refine if there is a correction that needs to be made he will begin to correct and lead you down the path so that you can let go yes of that in itself in order to receive the mercy of god and then eventually to save you from that destruction do you see that to save you from that destruction Amen. So I want to leave that with you. And if any one of you have done any of this in itself of the two things that I've mentioned, I bless you with the mercy of God. Amen. So in times past where you defile, you know, for majority of us, you know, in times past, we did this, not realizing the truth of it, you know, and now you've come into Christ, you've changed and everything is all good and, and amazing. I just want to bless you with life and with the mercy of God in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And amen. And if there is any destruction that was released in regards to that, as you repent of this in itself, I just release you from the accusations of that destruction and the judgments of it. And I bless you with life in Jesus mighty name. Amen. To God be the glory. I love you also very much. Stay blessed because you're the blessed of the one, blessedness of the one who called you right from the very beginning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.